Hey, you guys, we are excited to be back with you. We what, got a little derailed, I guess. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> For a couple of Sorry. weeks, actually, as we were leading into our live event yeah. that happened last Friday. Guys, that was amazing. It was so cool to be with people again. Um, and just the fellowship and the fun. Um, I, I think it's one of those things that you only realize how much you miss yeah. it until you get it back. And then you're or like, how wow. much you need it until you experience it again. You're like, oh, this was a void. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was a great, great time. But we are excited to be back with you again. Um, and as we discussed what we should talk about this week, we kind of landed on opportunity. Um, and that's because... There are thousands and thousands of families that are making the leap into homeschooling right now. And there are thousands and thousands of those that are Christian families that are for the first time ever starting to homeschool and they have the whole gamut of emotions. They're scared to death, they're fearful, they have dread, I'm sure. Some of them are right. even, I've seen it, some of them are even, um, they don't want any part of it. They feel totally forced into it. But here's where that opportunity comes in. Imagine what God could do if all of these thousands of families that he has now given the opportunity to invest in their families like this, invest in parenting their children yeah. the way that homeschooling allows you to, if they caught a vision for what that can entail, what could God do in our churches, in our communities, in our nation at large, um, so that that's a really exciting opportunity. I, I mean, it, it could cause a revival. Absolutely. Uh, quite honestly. I mean, you talk about families that are spending this much time and they actually look at what they do on a daily basis a little bit different. And it may start with teaching academics, but at some point they're going to realize this is about investing mm -hmm. much more than just teaching time in the kids. It's yes. much more than just curriculum and just getting through the material. It's about discipleship. And they start to kind of realize that, and then they're going to start going that direction. And they're going to have, especially if the parents are growing through this, uh, they're going to have much more opportunity. And if they're growing, it's going to overflow onto right. their kids. There's right. no doubt. Right. So um, it just it's a very exciting time because I, I feel like, we feel like, God has really positioned... Um, our nation through all this craziness. I mean, the world is upside down. We're all so frustrated with so much. Um, the discord is so ugly. Uh, there's just, there's a lot to really feel saddened about. But there is such great opportunity right now. We have been given a little bit of a slower pace, all of us, whether we are just starting or not, because the world has shut down we have been given a different pace. Maybe for a long time we had looked and thought, we're running too fast and I wish I could get off this hamster wheel. Well, now we kind of can. Yeah. And, um, and I think we've talked a lot in the past about um, how much time parents on average spend with their kids. I think yep. the number that we've we've referenced and we've talked about is 34 minutes per day, okay. which is great. I mean, when I first read that number, it was amazing to me. Yeah. Uh, you mean that's, and then you start going through the typical life of a Christian family and it, that are just, let's say they're doing Christian private school and they're yeah. dropping their child off at 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m. They're there all day long until 3.30. And then let's say that they play sports, they do after school type mm -hmm. stuff. They're probably busy until 5, 6, maybe 7. Right. Um, figure out what you're going to do about dinner. And then you have homeschool. I had yet you have uh, homework. Uh, homework. And then it's bedtime. Yeah. And so it is It is really hard to find time with your children. And so 34 minutes is actually is reasonable. It seems, it does. It and that's about to change. Things. Yeah, well, it already has changed. Yeah. Um, so I guess we really wanted to encourage you guys today to, first of all, make sure that your vision for what you're doing is, is the way that it should be. So... Um, you know, do you see this, no matter where you are in your homeschool career, as the opportunity that it is? As homeschool parents, we have the biggest platform with our children on the planet. Yeah. We have time to invest in them. We have the freedom to, you know, academically help them so, so much and follow the things that really, really excite them. 
but we also have the freedom to take detours and to have those engaging discipleship opportunities every time they come up. Um, we have the, the opportunity to, to mentor them in ways that other people don't, to live out our faith in front of them, like you were talking about, to grow and to just kind of bring yeah. them along with it with us as it overflows. Yeah. Um, you know, it's such a great opportunity if your vision for what you're doing lines up with the opportunity that you're given. Uh, absolutely. And I mean, you have uh, opportunity you've never had before. And it's like, what are you going to do with this opportunity that you have now? And are it's you, additional time. And it's an additional time that you haven't historically had. And uh, it, so now you have all this time. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to actually direct them to Christ? Are you going to spend time in discipleship with them? Are you going to spend time reading the Bible? Are you just going to be spending time? I mean, obviously, you're going to do school. Yeah. Uh, you're going to do school. I, I will say, just, just to kind of throw this out there, when we first started homeschooling, one of the biggest surprises I had was how quickly we were able to get through the material. And, uh, and, and you were doing more than what they were recommending. It, it, was, it was not a problem of not doing the material. Right. It was just so just, efficient. It's so efficient right. and you get through it. So that's kind of the reason why we're talking this way is that you are guaranteed to have more time with your kids to go through and do experiments, do unit studies, to get into all kinds of other stuff, but then also talk about how the Lord plays into all this. Right. Well, and the other thing with the time, you know, again, even for those of us that have been homeschooling for a long time, our time looks different now because we can't go out and do the field trips like we were. Co-ops may or may not be meeting the way that they were. So things are going to look different this year. And I found in my own family that it's very easy and it's a real slippery slope where you get so frustrated with the things that you're not able to do that you miss the things that you now are that you've really always wanted to. And you find time just slipping away. Um, a, a big time suck can be arguing in, in shallow arguments that um, we really just need to not engage in. The Bible talks throughout the, the epistles in the New Testament not to engage in, um, in stuff that it, we, we need to just ignore. So, um, but now, we can, it, it's using social that, media really yeah. opens that up to just let lots of time go by where when we could be engaging with our children, we're engaging in battles that we're not going to win. We're not even, we're just going to get upset about, um, because that's not the platform. That's not the platform for debate and argument. That's face to face and actually heart to heart as a believer. So, um, you know, I would encourage you to disengage from those kind of battles and to take that time and invest it because you have such an opportunity now. But if you're engaged in battles like that, your kids are watching and they also know she's kind of pushing me off because of what's going on here. And so, um, you know, it really, how we look at this opportunity is a really big deal right now for people all through, all up and down the line of how long you've been homeschooling. Absolutely. So I guess the second challenge that we would give, I've left him speechless. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second challenge that I we would give you guys this today is to help those that are new in your church really recognize the opportunity that they've been given. Help them get a vision for what God can do through homeschooling if you are looking at it as a discipleship parenting exercise. Um, come alongside them, go out to coffee or sit at a park, you know, yeah. six feet apart or whatever, have them into your home, whatever it takes, wrap your arms around them and help them get a vision for what God can do with this opportunity in their own life. They are scared. They dread all of those things we talked about at the beginning. And as veteran homeschoolers, we have a great opportunity to mentor yeah. and minister yeah. those in our churches and their communities. Pla their platform's completely different now Yeah, uh, where it was like, Oh, they're a homeschooler. Now it's like they're homeschooler. They're, they're the expert. <laughs> so, so just to encourage you in those two ways, make sure your own vision is right and you're spending your time wisely with all these new opportunities. And then take the time to encourage others to see what an opportunity they've been given as well. Um, and then we did it, want to just kind of toss out, uh, we've, we've put together, a, well, I guess I wrote a course, a, a class on how to homeschool for discipleship. Um, and that you're going to be hearing more about it in the days ahead, but that is just a step-by-step, -step, what I call it heart school. What does it look like when you are focused in on schooling for the heart of your children? And 
So I yeah. just wanted to throw that out because that may be a great resource for you to um, to share with your friends. Uh, just let them know what's coming probably later this week that you'll start hearing about it. So. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, as the resident father and husband in the group, husbands, you need to be actually uh, engaging in this. Yeah. And it can be as simple as just listening to your wife. It can be as simple as helping her understand what the vision of the homeschool is going to be. You don't even have to teach a class. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of you will, and some of you will want to do that. But what I'm trying to say is, is that above all else, you need to be actually focused on helping her understand what the vision is mm. and talking that through with her and giving her your support. That would be a, that, that's a big deal and she needs that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So take this opportunity, relish this opportunity, go grab a friend and help them understand this opportunity. And we will Lord willing talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Right.